Hello, uh, we're back and <clears throat> this is still week three and I'm doing the other part of the PowerPoint uh, but this part is the end of uh, chapter 14 in the electricity for heating, ventilation and air conditioning. So the uh, Russell Smith uh, book is going to be the last chapter. It has really some nice control equipment that I want you to uh, have be, be familiar with and I, and I want to talk about them a little bit. So. Uh, we talk uh, for us as combustion we're going to have to burn some stuff we have to burn a fuel uh, so far we're burning for like uh, for fuel we, we're either burning like gas or oil so gas to, we we need to burn gas and this uh, to burn gas also we need to, have to introduce the right amount of uh, air with it so uh, gas a little bit more uh, how can I say uh, it's easier to ignite and uh, for the longest time we used to need a pilot as an ignition method to light up the fuel gas also can leak easier and can spread out easier so there are different kind of systems for lighting up the, the gas and also when you light up gas probably you have seen there is a there's some kind of a puff in the beginning and uh, so with gas we probably have two you might have a pilot and you might need to ignite the pilot first before you ignite the main source of fuel however for, however for residential i have seen either the glow stick or uh, a spark for the beginning of the the gas for oil we we do like use oil vapor which we talked about previously in the previous video which is vaporizing or atomizing so and with or with oil we do not require to have a pilot we ignite the oil as is as it comes out from the from the uh from the nozzle so thinking of electrically in terms of control you need to prove the flame so whenever you have gas gas will take a little bit <coughs> more time to ignite because you want to make sure that the ignition is ready for it and you need to prove the flame very quickly and uh the time between dispensing gas and lighting it should be very as short as possible because if you're smelling gas every time you turn the burner on something is wrong uh, with oil everything is completely contained and uh, <coughs> the oil is introduced along with its combustion uh, required combustion air uh, more controls so so for basic heating appliances uh, we either heat air or water or produce steam so we can heat the air that's forced air system we can heat the water and using radiators or we can produce steam that goes into a radiator dispense heat and becomes water so this is more of a latent heat uh, they say the air is most popular for many regions because it can be coupled with AC uh, however it's still uh, not as popular I mean it is the most popular but uh, it's not as common as uh, hot air systems especially in western mass uh, it comes in many different styles and designs it can be uh, you can heat air using gas you can use heat, uh, heat air using an air pump or water I mean or uh, oil uh, water again it's popular it's not the most popular uh, it uses hot water boiler or water heater they say a water boiler which is going to be uh, using fire or a water heater which could be a heat pump or it could be electrical heaters so pay attention to that uh, steam we have to use uh, combustion and it has to be mostly either gas or oil uh, it's still used less popular as there is no new installation so we need a steam boiler and connection piping and it could be either one pipe or two pipe system uh, some basic controls for warm air we have many controls regarding of the energy type we have to control first think about it you have to control the temperature coming into the house you have to control control the dampers to distribute the air uh, fan operation at desired time that's also something you have to control so you control the fine speed and you also can control the air flow for safety controls you need to control the when does the heat comes on and off 
especially if you have combustion and you have to control uh, not the, the overheating of the of the air uh, first air heating equipment require method of controlling uh, the fan motor so the warm air will be delivered in the correct temperature and the correct flow rate uh, there are several time of fan switches and again uh, I will have you in any system lab 2 course uh, get introduced to a stack mounted relay just to have an idea of the bimetal control that goes into the the, the duct system so that we can control it we can control the temperature I mean you can we can sense the temperature into the uh, in the duct system either by using a thermocouple or we can still use uh, a bimetal spiral stack uh, relay so uh, temperature controls time and temperature control we can provide also timers and delays uh, and so on limit switches limit switches they give us the upper bound and the lower bound for the temperature when do we want to turn the furnace on and off uh, high furnace temperature uh, that's a, a reason for shut off the the air and again you don't want to produce very hot air so you have to have a fan limit switch on top of the furnace to know when to turn on the inducer fan or when to stop it uh, again unsafe conditions uh, to if the, if the air is too hot it will cause many problems one of them is drying out the, the air and second it can be a, a code a, a leading cause for fire uh, yeah get, there's an example here of flame rollout okay and also the, the direction of the air is very important if you reverse the direction by accident inside the, the duct you might be blowing air into the furnace and forcing the, the flame to come outside the furnace inside of keeping it uh, inside the furnace pressure switches are very important especially when it comes to to steam and also they do you they are, are also used to prove the flow of air if the air is flowing it's going to produce it's going to produce some kind of negative pressure so it ensures the com uh, the, com uh, the combustion blower is o is operating. That's uh, a good way to ensure that we have flow inside the flue pipes. So you can open devices using pressure switches. Uh, they do register pressure after one point from one point to another. Uh, pressure switches are also used to verify airflow. One way to verify that air is flowing through the orifice is to measure the speed and the pressure of air at one point and compare it to another point. If there's a discrepancy between those two points, that means that there is a leak in the system. Uh, and uh, I would love for one of you to do some kind of uh, uh, the paper on a pressure switch to see how they work. So it's a way of, verifi uh, of verifying verifying that the air is flowing and also it's a way to measure the flow rate which is the speed of air okay <clears throat> gas heating controls so basic controls of gas heating appliances it's uh, it's initiated when this uh, with a switch usually a thermostat closes and call for heat so this is some kind of controls that are associated with gas heat uh, so the first input usually is the thermostat after the thermostat calls for heat a sequence of operation happens based on the call for heat uh, these are some systems for with the standing pilot we don't use that very commonly it's not there and when they say intermittent it means it's interrupt it's also continuous it's always there and there is something called interrupted ignition and that's the ignition comes on only when you need it then it stops uh, direct ignition is a method used to light the main burner directly. Okay, uh, pilot left behind. This is a really old-fashioned uh, technology. I don't think it's there, or maybe, but but it's good to to know it does there. It does stay there. Where well, you have a pilot, and this pilot it stays on the whole time. And I remember at some point, gas ranges used to be uh, used to be pilot operated. You have a ongoing flame. Which is very wasteful. Uh, so whenever you turn on the gas for the main burner, it comes on. But this flame stays on the whole time. That is it's very wasteful. So uh, the use of thermocouple is uh, we will use small thermocouple wire inside the furnace to verify the existence of heat. Uh, we said before the two main ways to verify the existence of flame is either by light or temperature. So this thermocouple is very sensitive and it will detect 
the heat and shut off the pilot and shut off the ignition source and keep the flame going uh, and there is also a way to verify that the flame is gone so uh, if the flame is shut off the temperature will change and that will shut off the, the main source of valve and uh, if you ever came close to uh, a gas furnace probably you've noticed that the flame does not the the, the flame um, sorry the gas flow will stop immediately as the flow pipe flow uh, stops so whenever you call for heat there's an, an op, uh, a damper that opens to the outside and a continuous airflow will be proven first so you have to flow have the airflow and then you turn on the gas valve so the gas will not just come in a play in a in a in a location where there is no continuous airflow okay how I did not confuse you by that <coughs> uh, for oil we'll go and do a lot of uh, oil heat control uh, so we will use our <coughs> oil burner motor for supply air and supply the oil pressure and the oil valve is responsible for opening up the oil flow and shutting it off and we also use it ignition transformer to ignite so those three components are electricals and it will be the first thing we connect using a primary control uh, cat cell and primary control again we did cover that last class so I'm gonna skim over it stack switch that we will do a lab regarding stack switching and how switches and how they work it's a replacement for using the CAD they, again they sense temperature but it's not the code anymore because it takes too long to sense the heat unlike a thermocouple which is quick stack switches take a little bit too long to verify heat up to 90 seconds which is too long uh, and we can uh, use something else instead of that which is either a CAD cell or thermocouple uh, electric heat controls by electric heat we mean uh, electric heaters and resistance heat so we can use that with forced air furnaces and uh, they are they they can be used in an air handling unit they're very common in places where you don't use heat constantly and you can heat the space only during a short period of times uh, and they do have some relays and they are connected to a thermostat a thermostat come calls for heat the relay engages the thermostat I mean the heater and the, it will cause the air to flow uh, electric heaters are used for either forced air system and they can be also used for for hot water systems hydronic and steam controls safety controls again we did talk about that low water cutoff is the most important part of a uh, steam control because uh, we are producing steam so the rate of fire going into the chamber is very high Steam and controls. Let me see if there is anything new. Pressure switches used to operate. Okay, fine. So these are the most common controls you will see in chapter 14, which pertain to heat uh, heating systems, and we'll touch base on each one of those during the Energy System Lab 2, where you get exposed to those uh, to those sensors and controls to control either the flame, the fire rate the flow of air oil or water or the amount of steam coming into the system okay i'll add this uh, video to the week th to week three and uh hopefully it added some to your information let me know if you have any questions thank you